Morning guys, now Sunday morning. We did our first little video this morning yakking at the screen when I was driving to the store. Now we got Buddy out. We've got stem collar on him and we've also got a pinch collar. I've got a 20 foot long line or 15 foot long line. I've also got a crate over here and I've got the table that we're gonna be using as the concept trying to convey to the dog how to turn this uh, stem collar off. We've already went through a little bit of a uh, dialing in his working level we talked about on that on the other one and i've got it at about a 10 now it's still pretty low 10 to 12 is pretty low i find a lot of dogs will start to get a little bit more discomfort about 15 or 16 so anywhere from four to six is usually most dogs um, but he's a little bit higher drive and he's very excitable so his brain is in a different place and i like to try to make people realize what this is all about it's about distraction level okay if I've got Johnny in the in the living room and Johnny's watching TV and I say Johnny 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 doesn't hear me he's watching TV I said Johnny I'm trying to get his attention I finally get irritated by him I walk up I smack him on the back of the head and I say Johnny and Johnny goes what what do you what the heck it's because his brain is so into watching TV and his, his concentration is in a different place so excitement uh, stimulation from environment all these things matter because if the dog's distracted he may not even feel that stimulation okay until it gets to a level that's this discomfort and actually causes it to bite or hurt we don't want to do that we're trying to teach the first goal is to figure out what his working level is and we're trying to teach the dog how to turn off pressure how to turn off this little tingling that he feels okay come on buddy Hup. Couché. Good. So that's our first job. So I was doing that before I got you guys on screen here and I started to do it and I worked my way up to a 10 before I finally started to feel that the dog could sense it. You're looking for any kind of indication, uh, an ear twitch, or a lot of times dogs will look to the ground and they'll say, what the hell is that? Okay. We want just enough. We, we don't want them to yelp. We don't want them to show discomfort and have a, a stressful situation. We want them just to say, what the hell is that little feeling I'm feeling? And, and look for what it is. He'll look at the ground. His ear a twitch he'll all of a sudden look and cock his head in a different direction you're just gonna have to play with that until you figure out where the dog's working level is and we want to keep it as low as possible and then work off of that so I've got it at about a 10 now couche so I've also got a table and I've got the kennel so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start showing you guys how we do a three-way turnoff the first one is yep good boy go free hunt good is that we go out and we put the dog on a, on a relaxed and we get, grab our collar. We've got our stem. We're on about a 10. He's going to the bathroom. I'm not going to worry about it. This is because Buddy's been conditioned when he comes out of the kennel to start doing things. Now he's coming towards me because he's... So all I want to do right now, Buddy, good boy, good. There you go, easy. Nope. Hey, easy. He thinks I've got a ball and he's going to go jump, lunging after the ball. He's following into to previous... Uh, behavior patterns based on our patterns of training okay so what I want to do now is I want to put him on a 20-foot line and I'm just gonna walk him out and let him do his own thing and be distracted at the last second I'm gonna say buddy and right when he turns around right when he turns around I'm gonna release that button so I'm gonna start it when I say his name and right when he turns around it gives me recognition I let go of that button the idea is you're trying to teach the dog that stimulation goes away when he complies I don't need him to come all the way back to me Okay, I'm letting him have freedom right now. He's running because I'm talking to you guys. But in a general sense, I don't need him to come all the way back to me. All I need to do is have him turn around and I'm going to release the, the pressure. I'm going to let go of that button and I'm going to right away go into giving him his praise and coming back to me for the hot dogs. Okay, buddy, buddy, good boy, good. So let's do that. He wants to go to the bathroom, so we're going to let him go. I have to come out here and scoop this. So in a general sense... What we want to do is we want to right away when he recognizes by turning around, you're going to let go of that button. And right away you're going to give him his hot dogs let him come into you. So all we're looking for is his recognition and knowing that Buddy means he needs to come to me, right? So when I say his name, I want his attention. So right now that's what I'm going to do. Buddy, go free, hon. Buddy. Now see where he's at? I hit the button on 10. I told you that his working level. Look where the dog's head's at. He's distracted. He's sniffing. He's into something. Okay? So that means that that working level is not going to work for me right now. So I need to bring it up. So I'm going to take it to 11. Now it's on a 10. I don't know if you guys can see it. Um, that's a 10. Now he's into the balls because he's used to a conditioning 
of, of basically getting into balls, getting into all kinds of things. This may not work because I need somebody else to film me so I can get the dog into concentration. He's after that ball. These are previous patterns of behavior that we've got established in our work. So I've got a jacket on right now with all my pockets and all my balls and everything in it. This may be another factor. I may need to get rid of this. So I guess what I'm trying to get across to you in a nutshell on this one is that we need to be able to play with things until we figure it and di dial the dog into learning and sometimes that takes some creativity. Obviously, this jacket with all these tools may not be a good thing. I don't want the dog's head into all this stuff. I don't want him into sniffing on the ground. I want him to be more attentive with me. So maybe it might be advantageous for me to wear him out a little bit, run, the, run him on the ball, get him tired, and come back at this when he's tired. And generally, that's not a good place to have a dog when you're trying to teach him something and, and, and teach him something new. But in a general sense, this may be something we need to do with Buddy. Everything is not locked in definite. There's no exact way to do this. You have to feel it. I call it the gut feeling of dog training. We have to feel and understand. No, we're done. We're done. Where the dog's head's at. So I'm going to come back at this. I may have to film this with a person because I'm going to have to have them so I can concentrate on the dog and really be zoned in and really be laser focused on what the dog's giving me. If I don't, I'm not getting what I need to out of it because I'm chattering at you guys on the screen trying to hold this camera in my hand. It makes it very hard for me to put my other senses into the animal. And so I'm going to come back at this. But the three-way turnoff. One is going away from you and letting him down have freedom and right away saying his name, not even saying come, not even saying here. That's a specific command. I may just say buddy and then right away let go of the button when he turns around facing me. And then right away praise and follow through with what I want out of buddy, which is to come back to me. And then we do the table. I'm going to walk through this real quick with you. I'd like to be able to demo it, show it to you, but it's hard, like I said, when I'm trying to hold this camera. So now the other one that he's got in his, his pattern of behavior, buddy, good boy, good boy, hop, good, yes, good, is this hop back and forth, this, this loop behavior that I've got, hop, nope, good. That's another bad habit he's got caused by me dropping so many hot dogs on the ground. Going to the ground for food. It's a pain in the ass. Yep. Hup. Good. That's my boy. Good. Couché. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Now, you use the table and you say, hup, and right away the button gets released when he touches it, right? It's just like hot and cold. Right away when he touches it, the button goes away and he starts to learn to turn off pressure. Then the third one is that we do a kennel. He knows this command real well because you do it every night. You put him in his kennel. You do it, use it all the time. When you travel, you go everywhere. This is a tool that's in his repertoire all the time. Same thing would apply. I would stand back a little bit away from it. And I would say kennel, and I would push the button right when I say it, and I would get him to go in the kennel. Right when he touches that plastic, it goes away, okay? And you'd let go of the button. And so you're teaching him to turn off that pressure, okay? So that's our first next goal. Again, I'm going to try my best. Buddy, good boy, good, to um, have somebody come up and film me do this, and then I can show you a little bit better. I have to have full concentration on the animal. I may not be able to show it to you until I've got a lot of these behaviors built in, which is basically the three-way turnoff. First, going away from you when he's out in front on the 20-foot line. Right away when he turns away, you let go of the, pre the pressure, in other words, the button, and he comes back towards you. You praise him for it, and you keep doing that. You're finding him in a spot, basically, that he knows it real well to come to you, and he right away can get the concept of that that feeling went away right when I gave Dad the, the uh, attention that he wanted. Okay, right when I say, buddy, he turns around. I don't need to wait for the dog to come all the way to me. We're just trying to teach him right now how to turn off the stimulation, how to turn off that small little tingling feel that we've taught, we've shown him in our build, which is the first one is to teach him to figure out his working level, right? And then we start doing the table. And we teach the dog to go to the table. As soon as he touches it, the button goes away. Again, we're conveying the thought to the dog how he has the power to turn off this stimulation. All right? And then the third one that I like to use a lot is this kennel. He knows this. Kennel. Okay, right away he goes into it. The button would get released right then. Okay? So... I'm not using the stem collar right now because I don't want to confuse the animal. I need to have all my concentration on him. But I wanted to give you guys a concept of what I call the three-way turnoff. These are what I've picked as my things to do. The, the, the coming to you from out in front, the going to the table, and then going to this kennel. They're all very good concepts. Right when he touches this, his feet touch it, right away that button's going to go away. Right? That stimulation's going to go away. Right away when he goes into that kennel and he touches that, right when his two front feet touch that 
that plastic, it goes away. It's very easy to con convey to the dog what you're trying to convey to him, which is that he has the power to turn this off. That's the first concept we've got to get across to the dog. We do it by dialing in our working level first, and then we do it with something that's very... Uh, familiar to the dog. The dog has to know what you're using it for, uh, for him to be able to have the conveyed the thought to the animal to, for him to understand this. We're trying to give him enough knowledge so that he's not confused, he's not unsure of what this is. We keep it solid within those three things in the very beginning and then we build from there and we'll go into the, that more as we go along. So I'm going to let you guys go. This is getting too long and I haven't really given you enough demo, which is what I'd like to have done. Buddy, I'll see. Kusha. Good, buddy. Say goodbye to the people. Good boy. I'll talk to you later, guys. Bye-bye.